Welcome back to the Freeman Conversations. I'm Joe Berthoffel. Joining us in the program today is Liloan Cebu Mayor Christina Garcia Frasco. Mayor, salamat kaayo for joining us. Mayong adlaw. Mayong adlaw, Joe Berthoffel. Sa kaya salamat sa higayon na uh, appeal ni ining the Freeman Conversations. Mayor, if I remember correctly, the last time we spoke was in 2018 uh, in Power Women, our International Women's Month series in the Freeman. How are you? How, how has life been for you? Yes, that was quite a while ago. I was still on uh, my first term as mayor of yes. Lino. A lot has changed since then. And uh, more have been added to our family as well. <laughs> yes, congratulations on Baby X. Um, the public has been asking, uh, does it stand for anything? <laughs> yes, uh, Baby X actually stands for Vincent Xavier. X for short. <laughs> Congratulations once again on the addition to your family. Um, of course, even with the many blessings that you have had uh, for the past year, the past one and a half years have been quite uh, also devastating to many of us, um, even your family. Um, our condolences once again to the Garcia family for uh, on the passing of former Governor Pablin Garcia. And even last year, two other members of your family also um, passed on. Thank you. I really appreciate that very much. But again, um, as I mentioned, blessings still continue to pour in for you. Um, in particular, um, aside from Baby X, a new blessing to the family, you have also been recognized as number one mayor in Region 7 in a recent survey of um, public satisfaction survey. You actually got 70% approval, job approval rating. This is across uh, Region 7, 116 municipal mayors. You ended up as number one. How does that feel? at this point in the pandemic? Well, I'm very honored. And uh, honestly, it's been a very challenging and tough year for all of us. And uh, my focus really has just been to keep moving forward and to do my duty to Liloan to ensure the least harm to our general population and to ensure their protection and safety at all times and to balance that with my obligations to my family as well my young children and uh, having to deal with um, the personal tragedies that we've been through in the past year has also made it quite uh, difficult and so uh, the affirmation that we must be doing something right through uh, more than a majority support from the people of Iloan and uh, as we can see from the region is really heartening and uh, it's very encouraging. And uh, I'm really very grateful for this recognition. For the benefit of those watching, the survey was conducted from August 1 to 10 by the RP Mission and Development Foundation Incorporated. This is an independent and non-commissioned nationwide survey. They also recognize other LGUs and leader, leaders of other LGUs across uh, the country. They actually, the survey was conducted among 10,000 respondents. Um, in the law and mayor, uh, you've mentioned earlier, um, well, everyone is struggling with this pandemic, no? But uh, just recently, Iloan is among the LGUs in Cebu province um, placed under modified enhanced community quarantine, just like Cebu City and the other um, highly urbanized cities um, because of this threat of the Delta variant and the rising cases. How is Iloan not doing so far? Well, of course, we're managing. And uh, as we have done since day one of this pandemic, we've tried to be very involved and proactive in every single aspect of the day-to-day uh, -day experience of our constituents uh, as far as making sure that we're able to implement the health and safety protocols that uh, will result in the protection of our population. But uh, our strategic location being in Metro Cebu and supplying over 10,000 workers to the cities of Cebu, Mandawe, etc. really makes it inevitable for the law unknowns to uh, suffer infections from those that work in the cities. And in fact, um, 
our COVID-19 operations data would show that uh, more than 45% of our positive cases are actually workers in Metro Cebu. Um, add to that uh, around 10%, which constitute their families. So more than 50% of uh, the contagion in Liloan is uh, because of the workers that uh, are in Metro Cebu. Uh, in addition, there's also exposure uh, obtained by our positive cases in Metro Cebu, uh, as I mentioned earlier, by way of our strategic location. So our data shows that over 59% of those that have tested positive have had exposure to uh, Metro Cebu. Uh, nevertheless, uh, being fully aware of uh, the inevitable uh, in Liloan, we have tried our best to make sure that uh, we are very well coordinated with our 14 barangays, that uh, we are very aggressive in contact tracing, and uh, as well that uh, should there any should there be any households that uh, infections arise, that we conduct uh, lockdowns on these particular households to obviate the uh, risk of infection. Not only that, we've also been pr uh, tried to be very proactive. Uh, and innovative as far as our approach. No? We've tried to harness digital technology to help us manage in this very non-traditional uh, situation. So we've had to um, resort to non-traditional ways of governance. One of these is the launching of our Live Love Liloan app, where uh, we have uh, over 20,000 registrants already uh, that uh, allows them to access government services without having to go to the municipal hall. We also have an online health um, consultation that uh, allows our residents uh, the convenience of being able to have consultations with our local doctors without having to go through our uh, local rural health units and clinics. So all in all, no, uh, it hasn't been easy but uh, we've, we've tried to manage as best we can. If I remember, Mayor, last, last year, but we, we, Liloan even launched getting mga drones na to, to help um, monitor our communities. Yes, uh, that's called Project Lupad. No? Uh, it's still going on until now, and it has helped us vastly to um, give a sense that uh, you know, government is watching and uh, to obtain the cooperation of our constituents and the residents of Diloan and to make them understand how important it is to implement the health and safety protocols. So maglupad ang drone sa atong 14 ka barangay no, at certain times of the day and certain days of the week and nakatabang yun na nato na ko sa pag-monitor uh, sa, sa mga illegal activities o mga violations sa protocols nato. I learned uh, recently, Mayor, Liloan also launched your mobile vaccination clinic. Yes, uh, we recently launched our mobile vaccination clinic in partnership with SM and my bus. And this has allowed us to reach out to a lot of people uh, who would have otherwise not had the convenience of uh, being vaccinated near their homes. No? So it lessens the risk of infection side, kay they don't have to go to the vaccination centers. And uh, we give them the convenience of being vaccinated the ulra sa ilang area. So, so far, we've uh, covered four barangays no, sa lowland, and we intend to uh, roll out more vaccination buses to smaller buses to uh, cover our upland barangays. So we also have currently two uh, big vaccination centers in our central school as well as our a sports complex. So our vaccination efforts are ongoing. Mayor, just to clarify, ang kaning atong uh, mobile vaccination, is this targeting a specific group of people? Um, like in Cebu City, a mobile vaccination is, uh, in even the house-to-house -house vac vaccination targets those who cannot go to a vaccination center, specifically like uh, the elderly or the senior citizens or even those with uh, uh, or suffering from or recovering from diseases who cannot um, physically go to the vaccination centers? Or does this accommodate um, all residents of the town? Well, the primary target of the vaccination bus are senior citizens and persons with comorbidities. 
as well as persons with disabilities. Sila gyud ang atong primero na gihatagan og higayon na ma-vaccinate no kay nakasabot sad sa ilang kalisod. Uh, apan no uh, in the vaccination center in the vaccination site rather itself where the bus is uh, kung na ay kung nahuman na nato o cover ang mga senior citizens persons with comorbidities and PWDs mahimo sad tang accommodate sa uban pa na mga categories what has been the biggest challenge for Liloan as far as this pandemic is concerned mayor well, there's really a multitude of challenges, and uh, each challenge has its uh, specific problems, and we've tried to come up with solutions for these. I think overall, though, um, of course, there's a threat to life, no? especially in those who have comorbidities, uh, and as well, the devastating economic effects of the mm -hmm. pandemic, born out of the many months of quarantine in different classifications. So nakita yun nato na daghan sad yun sa ato making suunan ang nagkalisod, bunga na sa kawadoon no? o pagkawala sa ilang panginabuhi or gamay na lang ilang panginabuhi tungod sa atong mga quarantine restrictions and lockdowns. So naningkamot sad yun ta na makatabang ta sa ato making suunan, no? pamaagi sa mga government programs and projects na makahupay po sa ilang kalisod. Uh, this includes our program called Lilo and Works. It's uh, designed as an economic recovery program that provides emergency employment assistance to those whose livelihoods have been affected, gravely affected by the pandemic. So, naani siya cash for work and food for work component. No? Mahatagan ka o 2,000 pesos uh, after a number of days of work or a sack of rice after four days of work. Simple ra kayang trabaho, mananom, manlimpyo, no, mutabang pa ka sa mga environmental programs at ng LGU. Uh, of course, padayon sa diod ang pagmanghatag na to, mga food kits, o mga relief goods sa mga nanginahanglan. And uh, of course, as far as uh, medical, burial, and financial assistance is concerned, we continue to expend a huge amount of our budget to help those in need uh, and uh, our other programs like our scholarship program also continues to help families that are having a very difficult time during uh, or even before the pandemic. And uh, Mayor, of course, even with the threat of the Delta variant, I think this is a major threat to everyone, all LGUs at this point in time, um, we cannot also prevent our residents from Iloan or our workers in Metro Cebu to not go home to Iloan. Yes, uh, and that is why uh, we are not uh, imposing any, uh, you know, draconian measures on our workers because we recognize the value that they give to our town as well as the economic benefits that uh, they contribute to our communities and their families. We're very grateful for our constituents, no, na nagsakripisyo, na ninkamot, kadaadlaw, risking their lives, no, uh, working in whatever industry there is just to support their families. The best that we can do is to try to live with this um, disease, this virus rather, and to try to find ways that we're able to move on in a way that safeguards life, but at the same time balances it with the protection and the promotion of the economy. Ah, speaking of the speaking of uh, the survey conducted where you came out number one um, in Region Seven, the question asked in that survey um, to the respondents actually, do you approve or disapprove of the way your mayor um, is handling his or her job? And apparently, seventy percent of uh, your population approves of how you have managed probably the past year, although the survey was conducted only in the first 10 years, uh, 10 days of August, um, they must have looked into the past year. And how did that feel? Because last year, um, one of the major feedbacks that we have gotten is that the younger mayors of the LGUs actually have been the more aggressive and um, the more uh, practical when it comes to responses to the pandemic. Well, thank you for putting me in that category. 
Um, of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it feels very encouraging, no? Uh, na nakita sa atong mga kaigsuunan ang atong paningkamot. But, uh, you know, this is not a singular effort on my part. Uh, I am very blessed with a very dedicated and hardworking team in the persons of my fellow municipal officials and employees who day in and day out have given their all for the love of Liloan, without question and without condition. So we're very united as far as our goals are concerned. And uh, I think that unity and that resilience and that love for Liloan makes for a very formidable team. And I, I really am very grateful to everyone who has given their support and to everyone who has uh, been so dedicated to ensuring that Liloan and the Liloanons continue to be safe and their lives continue to improve notwithstanding the challenges of the pandemic. Mayor, if you can share with us uh, right now, how much of the population na ang na-vaccinate sa Liloan? How many na at this point in time? That we had uh, yesterday was uh, over 15,000, but uh, we anticipate that uh, this number will vastly increase, especially with our mobile vaccination and the putting up of our recent uh, new vaccination center in our sports complex. No? Uh, we've had some challenges as far as the rollout is concerned, especially considering that the supply of the vaccines is solely right. dependent on the supply given by the Department of Health. Uh, that is trickled down to the provincial health office. No? Uh, but from our end, din he puts sa LGU na kamuta that the venues and the avenues uh, where you may be inoculated are ready and prepared. So when we are finally able to receive the uh, vaccines that we have requested, no, uh, pas pas na ang atong rollout. Uh, I actually recently wrote uh, to the IATF to specifically request for more than what we have received no na mga vaccines mao nang nagwat takaron sa uh, bulk of uh, doses na ilang gi commit na ilang ihatag and hopefully no uh, mas mudaghan pagyod ang atong ma-vaccinate pohon yeah um, hopefully Liloan of course and the other LGUs we will we will be able to reach herd immunity as soon as possible um, as we move forward uh, from this pandemic. Uh, Mayor, another role that you have taken shortly before you um, gave birth to your youngest uh, was being a big spokesperson of uh, Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte. And um, this is stirring quite a controversy. <laughs> Not necessarily you're being spokesperson, but um, the mayor uh, made the headlines once again when she uh, made a statement uh, on that statements of the president and Senator Bongo running for president and vice president. Um, by the way, first and foremost, uh, what what are the parameters of your being spokesperson to the mayor? Well, first, I'm grateful for the trust and confidence reposed upon me by Mayor Inday Sara Duterte. Uh, Liloan and Davao have had a long-standing relationship. Uh, we are sisters, actually, by way of a sisterhood agreement that we signed a few years ago. And since then, Mayor, Mayor Sara and I have uh, built a, a relationship of uh, mutual respect and trust. And I'm, I'm glad that she recognizes this and I'm honored to be her spokesperson. Uh, the parameters are, uh, first, it has to do with the consultations that uh, she had done and intended to do uh, with uh, local officials no, uh, in Cebu and other areas uh, to aid in her decision whether or not to run for the presidency. And since then, in uh, interviews by the media, they've also uh, ventured into a multitude of issues that uh, they'd like to address the Mayor Sara, and I've had uh, the opportunity to reply. So um, when it comes to HNP Matters, her regional party, uh, Governor Anthony De Rosario is the spokesperson for that, but and for other matters, I'm her spokesperson. 
As far as Cebu is concerned, Mayor, how has the consultations been? How have the consultations been? Well, as you probably know, uh, Mayor Sara was here uh, to pay a courtesy call upon Governor Gwen Garcia. And uh, it was a very cordial meeting. And uh, Mayor Sara has said that she's learned a lot from Governor Gwen. Mo balik pas unta to siya, there is a Cebu, no? Uh, pero wala palang gayud na kahigayon, especially with uh, all the new developments karong panahuna. But uh, as far as my own uh, grassroots mm, kanang uh, relations, I mean, uh, kanang my grassroots consultations have been concerned, no? It's been very positive. And uh, malipayon sa kayo ta na kwan kayo. She's always very positively received, whether it's by local officials or sa atong mga kagsunang subuanon. Uh, the question, Mayor, is uh, by being her spokesperson, does this mean that if she runs for president, you will be supporting her? Well, I've always supported Mayor Sara, and whether or not she runs for president, I will still support her. So, uh, I'm just very honored to be her spokesperson. And uh, if that question leads to whether or not she will run for president, I think uh, that can be answered by Mayor Sara and Mayor Sara alone. And I'm sure an announcement will be made uh, soon as far as that's concerned. Okay, uh, we're, we look forward to that, to that answer, Mayor. But uh, hypo hypothetically, should she run for president and should you be supporting her when that happens? Will this also extend to your um, political group here in Cebu, Juan Cebu, the support for the mayor? Well, you know, I think that is a question that can be asked uh, once plans have been finalized as to who is really running for president. No? Uh, Juan Cebu is headed by Governor Gwen, uh, and I am a member of one Cebu, and I fully respect the process of the party as far as uh, choosing the national candidates that it will support. Nonetheless, uh, in behalf of Mayor Inday Sara, I'm very grateful that uh, Governor Gwen warmly received Mayor Sara when she visited her in the capital. Mayor, um, thank you very much once again for joining us. Congratulations on your recognition as the number one mayor in Region 7. As far as that survey of uh, RP Mission and Development Foundation Incorporated is concerned. By the way, um, the other mayors who made it to the top five, if we may just acknowledge them, Mayor William Howe of Tabigon Bohol, Mayor Alex Binhaya Balamban, Cebu, Mayor uh, Richard Quez uh, Quezon of City Hor, and of course, Mayor Marian Castillo of Valihermoso in Negros Oriental. Mayor, um, final words for your constituents. Mapasalamaton kay ko sa akong mga kaigsuunang liloanon. Thank you, Gyud, sa inyong makanunayon na suporta sa kanunay. Alang kanako, kang Congressman Duke Frasco o sa kinatibukan sa Team Frasco. Makalao mo na sama sa kaniadto, paron o sa umaabot. Kanunay, Gyud, ang atong pagmahal sa liloan o ang atong paningkamot na ang kalidad sa kinabuhi sa tanang mga liloanon sa kanunay, Gyud, na muangat kauban usab sa pagangat sa atong mahal na lungsod puhon na mahimo ng usa ka city of Liloan. Thank you very much Mayor Cristina Garcia Frasco of Liloan Cebu. Thanks for joining the Freeman Conversations. Thank you Jobert. Dagan king salamat. And to you all watching, thanks for joining us for a closer look at the latest stories, trends and events. We'll see you again next time here on the Freeman Conversations.